Being a polyglot, someone who speaks three or more languages fluently, I have a special interest in understanding what I say. In order to be productive during my gap year, I took a job teaching languages. Things didn't start off smoothly. When I was asked questions like, what's the present participle? I wasn't able to answer until I did some research. In other words, I wasn't able to logically explain why I use certain expressions. I felt embarrassed. Stereotypically, teachers are supposed to be the dorms, equipped with everything students can possibly want, except for memory bread. But then I felt as if I discovered a new world. The moment I realized that there are so many things behind my unconscious usage of language, I was eager to learn more, not only about what they are, but also about why am I ignorant about them, whether or not it's shared among me and my peers. And if so, what can we do as a society to change it? One of the languages I taught was English, and it also happens to be a language in which this issue is highly relevant to most of its speakers. So for the sake of argument, assuming that you were educated in the English speaking environment, like I was, you probably learn English and foreign languages differently. Most native speaking classrooms do not have a structured and rigorous teaching of grammar as native speakers acquire their grammar from their parents and other speakers in their native environments. Teachers often expect that students are capable of subconsciously understanding basic grammatical rules and move on to more complex material. On the other side, non-native speaking classrooms teach grammar from day one, providing students with powerful shortcuts to understand language from logic rather than empiricism. I argue that we need to systematically teach grammar, not just to foreigners, but to everyone, including proficient or even native speakers. Ever since the English speaking world took a less theory-based approach to language, university professors started noticing a drastic drop in quality of writing, and communication through social media certainly hasn't helped. What are the consequences of not knowing grammar you may ask. Well, for one thing, you force yourself to trust what sounds right. However, while grammar is supposed to be unambiguous, sound is not. Take homonyms. When two or more words are spelled similarly, very similar in pronunciation, but different in meaning. In practice, it looks like this. Take the words it's, there, and read in the following sentences. It's a cat. I like its eyes. They are awesome. I enjoy their company. I read a book. The book is read. Grammar can also be worth a lot of money. In October 2006, because of an additional comma in a contract between two companies in Canada, one of them was able to save $2 million. Well, that's two million more reasons to learn grammar. If sound can already be deceiving, it's even worse when it comes to punctuation marks, which aren't even pronounced. So what can we do? I believe action should be done on two different levels. The first one is institutional. Our schools should drill grammar not only just in elementary school and perhaps in middle school, but also extend it beyond to high schoolers who are likely to be more mature. Only then can writing and speech reach its desired effect. The second level is personal, as far as you are the curious type, and to deepen the understanding of your language or languages. Let me show you something that you might find cool. Take my brown little cute dog and my cute little brown dog. Which one is more correct? Well, based on adjective prioritization, the second one wins. We often use this order subconsciously, 
but how awesome would it be to learn an elegant formula to explain why we do it? Furthermore, in this ever-globalizing society, we will all communicate with more people. It could be an employer, an admission officer, or a friend. You want to create the best impression and avoid misunderstanding. For instance, you don't want to text your friend saying, let's eat Alex, as opposed to, let's eat, comma, Alex. <laughs> Although you won't be losing two million dollars, you just lost a friend by eating him alive. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's too late now to say sorry. <laughs> Take advantage of books. Use online resources to check your grammatical mistakes. Or just try to teach your language or languages to non-native speaking friends, especially beginners. I strongly recommend the last one. By doing it as a temporary profession for the past few months, I found it to be one of the most rewarding experiences. American writer, activist, and feminist, Rita Mae Brown once said, language is the roadmap of a culture. It tells you where people come from and where they are going. How can we say that we know a culture if we don't possess the keys to decipher its daily spoken words. Learning grammatical imperatives is one of the best ways to bridge one's conscious self with his or her subconscious one. And I hope that you are as excited as I am to undertake this marvelous journey. Shukran, spadiva, gracias, merci, grazie. Sì, sì. Thank you.